Good morning. I'm delighted to be joined today by Tadeusz Kaczynski, the Finance Minister of the Republic of Poland. Minister Kaczynski is, is, can I say, one of us, an ex-banker, um, who, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, moved to Poland to help with the transformation of the Polish banking system. And I think he could take a lot of the credit for its modern and technological outlook of the system that we, we all know and love today. Since 2016, Minister Kaczynski has worked in public administration, initially in development ministry, and then in finance, and since 2019, serving as the Minister of Finance. Minister, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. And from uh, October, also the Minister responsible for funds and uh, regional policy. So a, a dual mandate. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I was looking recently at statistics for the um, GDP impact of the coronavirus by country. And I think one thing which stood out is that Poland has done less badly than many of the peers. I think that there are predictions of a 4% GDP drop compared to, in many cases, 10% or even greater drops. What do you ascribe that to? And in particular, are there any policy measures that you think have been particularly effective in addressing the economic impact of COVID? Yes, uh, absolutely. I think uh, some policy measures which we brought in before the uh, pandemic came in, so obviously before we knew uh, the, of the, that uh, the recession was coming, uh, obviously helped us to have a good starting point. Uh, first of all, we, we clamped down on tax evasion over the last uh, three years so that uh, our uh, VAT gap uh, uh, for tax evasion reduced from 24% down to about 12%, which allowed us to actually finance a lot of the social wealth uh, 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 programs that we had, so wealth distribution programs, which meant a lot of money was going into uh, consumers' pockets uh, 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 because, of, because of our programs, uh, which is very important for us uh, now during the uh, recession. And the second, I think, uh, policy that we had before the pandemic came in was we reduced uh, the uh, the government debt. Uh, for, we reduced it uh, by about 8% over the last uh, two or three years. Uh, and also uh, the budget uh, in January, difficult to uh, believe, but in January we actually had a planned uh, budget, which was uh, a balanced budget, so no deficit. So when the pandemic hit us in February, March, I think we had a very good starting point. Uh, uh, we had a f significant financial cushion, which allowed us to very, very quickly uh, uh, bring in uh, uh, help uh, to, to, the, uh, to, to uh, the industry and, and to, to uh, commerce. To, to make sure that uh, firms don't go underwater, that uh, they they keep their jo uh, the people's jobs, uh, uh, so furlough schemes, etc., um, which of course uh, uh, helped us very quickly in the in the third quarter once the pandemic started to recede of it, that uh, the people still had jobs uh, and uh, our uh, companies were working very well. Consumers had uh, money in their pockets, uh, which they were spending and helping the economy to to. Uh, to uh, get back on onto its uh, right tracks. Now, of course, we're now having the second wave, and uh, but the second wave of the pandemic won't be as bad as as, as the first wave because the first wave will run. We're all learning what uh, what what, uh, what this new recession uh, how we should tackle it. But also, our supply chains were totally disrupted. China was uh, locked down. Our, our uh, major export markets like Germany and the rest of Europe were, were in lockdown. Now, with the second wave. China is open uh, for, for fully open for business. Most of our uh, partners in Europe uh, are open for business. Of course, uh, uh, so, so on the on the uh, retail side, there's problems, but I think uh, mostly uh, uh, they're open. So we don't see uh, such a big uh, problem. So uh, uh, all in all, I think uh, the policy measures that we had uh, before the pandemic helped us. Obviously, a very very quick uh, implementation of of the uh, help the our uh, what we call the um, uh, the uh, the five pillars. So one pillar was uh, to plow a lot of money, a lot of liquidity into the financial markets, uh, to to help uh, to keep up uh, uh, the, the the furlough schemes. So jobs were were there. Uh, also, a lot of money went into the medical sector. All, all in all, helped us to to keep the the economy relatively stable and and helped us to to get through the summer. So the benefits of a um good structural reform before the exogenous shock kicks in. Um, if I can be a little bit more negative and forward-looking, though, um, clearly there are some disputes between your government and the European Union and, and some other governments also in that. Now, I'm not interested in politics. It's outside the remit of, of this conversation. 
But I'm just wondering what you think the potential economic impacts of that are and what, what scenarios you see panning out for the impact on government finance in particular and the Polish economy more widely. Well, I think uh, hopefully that um, uh, some of the problems uh, seem to be uh, 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 going away because, first of all, let's 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 uh, uh, be yeah, certain on this that Poland is obviously uh, uh, very keen to ensure that funds coming from the uh, EU are spent uh, correctly and according to the law. And uh, uh, we're, we're very much on board on this. And uh, I think Poland has actually a very, very good track record in spending money according to uh, the rules and regulations uh, that are set by the Commission. Uh, we have a problem uh, with when it comes to... Uh, different aspects being uh, different aspects of the conditionality put in the problem there is that because uh, we don't know what the conditions are so we don't know what uh, what going forward uh, what that means for us or for any other country and this is where the problem is but i think that uh, that that issue is being uh, sorted out at the moment and uh, hopefully for the next few years at least uh, we won't have that problem so the the funding coming from the uh, EU will will be on track. The the, the budget uh, has been agreed to, uh, for for the next uh, sort of, uh, semester, and hopefully uh, the rest of the financing will also start coming through uh, 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 as uh, as we uh, were expecting all the time. Hopefully so. Um, now, Minister, earlier you mentioned um, the integration into supply chains. Clearly, Poland has done exceptionally well in the globalization of supply chains being a, can I say, medium wage economy with some you know, some very high human capital. Um, but supply chains are changing. Everything that we've seen as, as a result of this year, new relationships with China, changing supply chains, changes to the automobile industry, changes to the German economy, clearly supply chains are changing a lot. What's your view on that and what's the, the policy? I think it's uh, an uh, excellent opportunity for for Polish business to 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 uh, take advantage of of the change that's going on. Uh, Poland in the early 90s uh, and the early 2000s our economy was based on what I call the imitation economy. So we were doing the same as somewhere else was in the world. We were just competing on price. So metal bashing type of uh, business. Uh, in the last uh, five, uh, five, five years or so, we're moving the economy very quickly from an uh, imitation based to an innovation based economy. So, uh, I, I think high-tech, uh, future-proof type of technologies is uh, very attractive uh, for, for us. And we've had uh, tremendous success in actually uh, uh, attracting foreign direct investment in these areas into Poland. Um, Poland, unlike many of the uh, Western countries in Europe, is not based on very, very big global companies. So uh, we, we, we're based on uh, medium and small uh, enterprises, which tend to be able to adapt to new uh, situations much, much quicker. And we can see this already this year, even during the uh, uh, the, the pandemic, where we're in deep recession. And of course, deep recession is relative for various countries. Uh, we had uh, quarter on quarter I think about 9% uh, recession, where some countries were having a 20 odd percent. Um, but even in those situations, we've in that situation, we've managed to increase the number of jobs we have in Poland. Uh, we've increased our exports. Uh, our manufacturers increased even during such a, such a turbulent time. So it shows that our, uh, our companies are very well placed to, to adapt to the new situation and hopefully uh, will take advantage of uh, breaking some of the supply chains. Uh, so the supply chains, hopefully uh, so the supply will come closer to the consumption here in Europe. And uh, Poland is very well placed to, 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 to f fight above its weight uh, in that uh, battle. Mm. And presumably, presently, um, reversing the the brain drain that Poland has suffered from of people. Uh, uh, absolutely, I think we we have already evidence of that. Uh, uh, of course, the, the the brain drain has has, has dried up a bit uh, over the last few years because the Polish economy has been performing very very well. Uh, and and uh, as I said, the, uh, we're moving away from the imitation metal bashing type of uh, mm. uh, 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 economy to a high tech economy. Now, obviously, we still have a problem with the uh, salary levels. Uh, people earn a lot more, about 50% more when they go to, to, to West to do the same type of jobs. Uh, but uh, 
what's happening is that because uh, the uh, Western Europe has been in the doldrums over the last few years, but the Polish economy has been growing, uh, the, the wages have been increasing in Poland. But more importantly, we have much more interesting uh, projects happening in Poland. So people are, are realizing that perhaps job for job, they'll still learn less in Poland, but the promotion prospects are that much better. And the cost of living is obviously uh, much, much lower in Poland. So uh, this is beginning to attract uh, people to come back uh, to Poland at the, at the higher end uh, of, of the scale. Excellent. One final topic that I'd like to touch on, and it's something which is very close to our hearts at Euromoney conferences, is the topic of green finance. I think I'm right in saying that Poland was the first sovereign in the world to issue a green sovereign bond back in 2016. A lot of countries have followed in your footsteps, most recently including Germany. Any thoughts on the development of that market and how much you're going to be using it going forward? I think, uh, yes, uh, we're very pleased with our track record there and hopefully we can continue. Uh, but of course, the financing uh, is, is uh, you, you need to have a, a purpose to finance and uh, and. At the, uh, the moment, we don't need to issue uh, a new uh, a green bonds or anything because there's a lot of money coming from uh, uh, from uh, the, the European Union to, to finance uh, green projects in Poland. Um, we've already uh, 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 issued uh, uh, bonds of about 1 billion euros over the last month or so from the Shora project, uh, um, so, so, and that's with negative yield. So, uh, this is a number of issues here that one that we need to have the purpose, the, the reason to actually uh, uh, bring in more money, money outside of the funds being uh, offered uh, by the EU. But uh, as, as I say, we're, we're looking and uh, we're hoping to expand Poland's position in, in a green financing. Uh, that's, uh, I think, very interesting for us. I think speaking for a lot of the um, DCM bankers who are going to be watching this call, I think there will be an enormous appetite for uh, for security if you if you were to look to it. Super. Minister, thank you very much for joining us today. Very positive very... update. And thank you. We wish you well with those endeavours. Thank you. Thank you.